we obtained the never before seen raw footage of the president recording his address to the nation that day on January 7th, more than 24 hours after the last time he had addressed the nation from the Rose Garden. Let's take a look. Whenever you're ready, sir. I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack yesterday. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. You do not represent our movement. You do not represent our country. And if you broke the law, you can't say that. I'm not going to. I already said you will pay. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defied the seat of dust. It's defiled, right? See, I can't see it very well. Okay, I'll, I'll do this. I'm going to do this. Let's go. But this election is now over. Congress has certified the results. I don't want to say the election's over. I just want to say Congress has certified the results without saying the election's over, okay? But Congress is certified. Now Congress is Yeah, certified. right. Now Congress is certified. I didn't say over, so let, let me see. Go, go to the paragraph before. Okay? I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack yesterday. Yesterday is a hard word for me. Just take that. The heinous the attack. Heinous attack or heinous ah, attack. good. Take the word yesterday, because it doesn't work with the heinous attack on our country. Say, on our country. Want to say that? No, no, no. My only goal was to ensure the integrity of the vote. My only goal was to ensure the integrity of the vote. On January 7th, one day after he incited an insurrection based on a lie, President Trump still could not say that the election was over. Well, you just summed it up. Uh, when you look at the details, seeing then-President Trump the day after trying to give a, a speech, taping a speech, and the outtakes, things that he was being asked to say and wouldn't say were so telling. In, in particular, the biggest is, I don't want to say the election is over. I want to say Congress certified. And the point that, that they made on the panel is, to this day, he has not acknowledged that the election was, was never right, free or fair. To this day, he's saying it is fraudulent. But seeing those moments were so telling. So powerful. Chris Wallace, um, we saw outtakes from President Trump's speech on January 7th that, that Dana was just referring to. Uh, clearly a speech he did not want to give. I believe the voice that we hear in the background is that of Ivanka Trump. Let's run a little bit of that and then I want to get your reaction. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. You do not represent our movement. You do not represent our country. And if you broke the law, you can't say that. I'm not going to, I already said you will pay. But this election is now over. Congress has certified the results. I don't want to say the election's over. I mean, that's just remarkable. I don't want to say the election's over, Chris. Yeah, uh, look, the, you have to understand the context, as, as, as we heard today, uh, of how that speech on January 7th, the day after the insurrection was made, which is the top advisors, family members were telling Donald Trump, look, you're in real danger of the 25th Amendment being invoked and you're going to be taken out of office. You've got to say something. And they particularly wanted him to say there is now going to be a transition of power. And what becomes clear from watching those outtakes, this isn't just that he's making you know, fluffs and mistakes, as any person would reading a teleprompter. It's how utterly insincere that statement was, that it was the last thing that he really believed. Uh, he didn't want to condemn uh, the, the, the protesters and say a couple of times that they broke the law. As you say, he didn't want to say the election is over. He, he knew he had to say something if he was going to finish his last two weeks in office, but he was going to be dragged kicking and screaming to make that statement, and you saw there just how insincere it was.